All right, seven o'clock. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I guess before we get to the, uh, the announcements that are on the agenda, I just wanted to um, come up with the announcement that we did declare a state of emergency here in Irvington today. Uh, the text reads, based on the current public health crisis related to COVID-19 virus, in anticipation of a significant threat to public safety pursuant to the New York State Executive Law, Article 2B, Section 24. I, Brian C. Smith, Mayor and Chief Executive of the Village of Irvington, hereby declare a state of emergency effective at 1 p.m. on Monday, March 16, 2020, which will remain in effect until further notice. Um, we've actually taken um, two executive orders so far. Uh, they both are um, effective tomorrow. Um, the first one uh, is to protect public safety, public and staff. There will be no public access to the IK Benjamin Community Center. Senior Citizen Center, DPW offices, Water Department offices, Irvington Public Library, and the Village Hall, which includes the Village Administrator, Court Treasurer, Building Inspector, Theater and Justice Court, and again, effect of March 17, 2020. So it remain in effect until further notice. Um, Brad, can I ask you real quick when the Senior Center isn't included in that? It is. Oh, I didn't hear it. Yeah. Sorry. No, okay. it's okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, so all village buildings. All right. village buildings, yeah. yeah I, I didn't specifically list the Nature Center, but the, the, there's no staff that's probably. Right, so it's closed. Yeah. It's closed. Except the squirrels. <laughs> they're allowed. <laughs> they're, they're, they're exempt. Uh, then for to protect visitors to our parks and reduce opportunities for gathering spots. The playground location in Matheson Park, the playground location in Station Road Park, and the playgrounds and basketball court located in Cedar Cousin Park be closed to the public use in fact of March 17, 2020. Um, there's actually a, a, I guess a recommendation. Closer. I, 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 it was a it came up on a conference call with the, the Westchester County Health Department about the playground specifically. Yeah, and and basketball courts were concerned as well. So, um, so especially at the playgrounds, uh, almost impossible to continue to sanitize them. You basically have to every time a kid was on the slide, you'd have to have someone go down and do it again. Um, and then secondly, it's just a place where more than you know too many children were you know conjugating in one place. So it's a uh, it's a tough decision because without schools, obviously, kids need a place to go. Um, but large groups of children together is not what we're but looking for. But the parks themselves, of course, the are open. The parks are open. Yes. Uh, the walking paths are open. And you can walk around. Just, you know, don't kind of get hate too much. <laughs> for now. No, I, th I think that's <laughs> for smart. Now. You definitely can walk and stay separate from other people. That's and the right. aqueduct is, is, is the state is, parks are Yes, open. And all the parks have been very busy. Rockefeller State Park um, is open and... <sighs> Many, many acres. Oh, one other announcement I, um, from personal experience. Um, if you're bringing your dogs to Irvington Woods or on the aqueduct, they have to be on a leash. Um, my dog almost ate another dog today because luckily we had a gentle leader on my dog because, you know, it was a smaller dog, not a small dog, but my dog would have eaten it if it didn't have it because there's off leash. So just because your dog's friendly doesn't mean the other dogs are friendly and it doesn't mean that people want to be jumped on by your dog. This is so, my mantra, you know, it's, uh, your, your dog is friendly, yeah. is isn't. No, uh, same way. If I, I always have, seem to have dogs that don't like other dogs. So uh, please, if you're going to walk your dog, walk your dog in a leash. You're not supposed to be running wild, even in the woods. Uh, it's, it's very simple. It's very simple, and it just seems to be something that we have a lot of. We did discuss with, with the rec department that there is a bigger parking lot at the uh, nature center area, so there, there, it's possible for people to go to the woods from two places, from the reservoir and from the nature center parking lot. So both of those, I mean, just in terms of outdoor spaces for people to go, you know, we just named, what, five that are um, within yeah. and the walking distance. I don't think we mentioned Halsey Pond either, so that's another place you can go. Yeah. Which but, is beautiful. Yeah. Which is absolutely nice gorgeous. Beautiful. So uh, you could get out there and walk around and you know, stay away from other people yeah, and keep exactly. your dog in a leash. Um, the uh, well, other, other announcement we have is a uh, is a uh, check over $25,000 pursuant to our Bellevue uh, Persons policy. This the vendor was Pearl River Plumbing and Heating. It was for the firehouse interior renovation. It's the final payment. Uh, it came from the capital fund, which was also from insurance proceeds and bond. Uh, it was $102,981.20. And 
And then we have Borrelia Mechanical, which is IFD uh, HVAC replacement, and the capital fund for $29,750, which is half of the uh, amount. Um, then we have the correspondence. Um, first one is from Lori Regan, uh, who forwarded her petition uh, to keep Madison Park, quote, safe and private. Um, she points out that there's now 322 uh, signatures. Um, she wanted to know the status of the discussions, which um, responded to tell her that they've been put on hold uh, on Madison Park for now. Um, then she also wanted to um, find out about uh, if we are vulnerable. Oh, she, she's telling where we're vulnerable to losing federal funds now the Trump administration's policy of holding federal funds from sanctuary cities has been upheld. Um, did we provided her a list of the federal funds that we received, which were all for projects. Um, you know, we didn't, we don't feel that they're in any danger. Um, and then she also wanted to know uh, the immigration status of the two people involved in the murder of the River City Grill, the victim and the attacker. Uh, we again told her that uh, the police department does not record immigration status on any of their reports, so we don't have that information. But the murderer is going to she plead, she pleaded guilty and is going to be serving 17 years in prison, so at least be a resident of New York State for the next 17 years. Um, the next letter, actually, we actually did, we discussed most of this at the last work session. Yeah, it was from uh, from Peter Buderi. It's about the uh, Broadway uh, North Broadway mixed use district. Um, he had a bunch of questions, which we actually went uh, we went over. Um, I believe we went over all these. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at, at the proper meeting, so we answered I think all of them. He was there, so yeah, we had a good discussion. Thank you for that again, Peter. Um, and the last one is Ann Altman. Uh, in light of the recent advisories from the desk of the mayor and the school superintendent's office as a community, we should be taking immediate measures to secure the health and safety of all of our residents and neighbors by demonstrating responsible care for themselves and great consideration for others. That is why in the days directly following those memos, I was alarmed to see the Irvington Union Free, High, the Union, Irvington Union Free School District, High School Campus, uh, and Irvington DPW uh, on Station Road Tunnel using leaf debris, mower, leaf debris blowers chewing clouds of particulate matter and exhaust in the air during public health emergency. COVID-19 affects people with compromised immune systems and respiratory deficiencies. Therefore, it's irresponsible, reckless, and negative for the town, school district, and commercial companies to continue this non-essential, counterproductive, and highly polluting practice. And use of debris blowers should be immediately suspended indefinitely. Thank you for addressing this ASAP. That's from my hospital. Um, anyone else have announcements? I didn't ask that. There weren't too many things going on. Um, there's no one in the audience, so there will be public comment. Uh, anyone have any questions on the consent agenda? Otherwise, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We should, approve, should we only be approving travel out of town at this point? Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, this, uh, My big concern was whether we should be approving trial, uh, approving, I can't even say the word, <laughs> travel, travel out, of town. out of town at this point for village employees. My guess is um, they're going to be using their judgment on that and cancel if it's, I'm guessing, but what's the date of it? It's July. It's July, July. So. Oh, July. Yeah, so, I mean, sorry, I so, thought it was much closer. I'm assuming, you know, obviously if it's um, if it's canceled, they, uh, they won't spend the money, but I think if it's... I just said that to your judgment to see where we are at that point. Yeah, right exactly, because that's going to be, I think that's a tough tipping point, so we'll see. Um, the continuation of the public hearing consider local law amending the zoning code to create the North Broadway Mixed Use District is suspended from further notice. And the public hearing consider local law amending the Irvington Code to put limitations on parking commercial vehicles is also suspended until further notice. Um, which brings us to approval of an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Greenberg regarding the East Irvington Fire Protection District for 2020. Uh, any big changes in this letter? Uh, no, actually, um, the amounts are very similar, and um, you know, same, same agreement, same service that's being provided by the fire department to the East Irvington Fire District. Well, uh, I'd like to uh, actually thank the town of Greenberg for you know, kind of being proactive this year and, and getting this done very quickly. So uh, we didn't have to chase it down, I don't think, too much. No, no. So uh, this was, I think they actually brought it to us at a meeting. So, uh, at a, at a, at a local officials committee meeting. So I was uh, very happy and, and uh, thankful uh, to the town of Greenberg for taking care of us so quickly. So. 
I will go ahead and read. Whereas the village of Irvington and town of Greenberg have reached agreement on the provision of fire on the provision of fire protection services for the East Irvington Fire Protection District for the periods January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Now, whereas the payment due from the town of Greenberg under said agreement is $113,012 for 2020, that is for be it resolved to authorize the mayor to execute an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Greenberg regarding the East Irvington Fire Protection District, subject to final review by the village attorney, and further resolved to authorize the clerk treasurer upon receipt of the payment from the town of Greenberg to make a payment of $39,554 for 2020 to the Irvington Fire Company in accordance with the terms and conditions of their intermunicipal agreement. I'll make a motion for that. I'll take a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. You need to sign one, Larry. Um, I have to get signature copies ready, but okay. I know I have the errors, but no worries. Yeah. Um, next up uh, is approval of contract 2020-05 for professional services with Kim Kim Kimley. Kimley Horn. Kimley Horn. Oh uh, yeah. I'll, I'll go through it. Okay. So. Um, First of all, what I handed you there is, is the actual scope of work, which I, is, is not terribly extensive. Um, it's, a, it's a small contract right now um, because we have to do some upfront work uh, to really better understand what the scope is uh, for, the, for this area. So, um, but to describe the process, the, um, we did issue a request for qualifications. We received a total of eight responses from uh, professional firms. Uh, we were able to narrow down that list uh, after a review of the uh, subcommittee, which is Connie and Janice and myself, and uh, we were able to narrow that down to four. We interviewed the four firms and very quickly narrowed that down to two and eventually one, which is Kimley Horn. Um, so at this point, the uh, what, what we're asking for your approval on is um, the, the initial task of uh, establishing a community engagement plan. Um, the fee is a, a lump sum of $2,900. Um, the, the plan uh, is really to uh, decide how it is we're going to reach the uh, various users of this area, um, how we're going to evaluate um, what the issues are down there, try to be better determine what the issues are, um, and, and then establish a, a more concrete scope of, um, uh, of the actual project. Um, so that's, this is really just a, we can call it a task one, phase one, whatever you want to call it, um, and that's all this is now. Um, future phases obviously would, would be a, come back in front of you and be approved uh, for approval. That's it. Um, interesting also to note that the timing of the work um, is, is going to be delayed because there's really, um, th there's no realistic representation of what that area is in terms of traffic and usage and all of that with the, with the uh, commuting and, and traffic numbers way down at this point. So we don't know how long that'll, um, that'll be the case, but whenever, Whenever we get back to some sense of normalcy, <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, we'll try to get this work done. But it really is a victim of uh, incredibly poor timing. But it sounds like at least the first couple of phases can move forward. Some things can happen. They, they, can, they, can, they can start to put together you know, the, the ideas of how they want to go about this, but then to actually go about it and start surveying and you know, interviewing on the street, whatever the plan is, yeah. It's meaningless at this point, yeah. You can't see the traffic flow because there's no yeah, traffic. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. perfect. And you can't talk to anyone because no one wants to talk to you. Yeah, well, that's yeah. true, yeah. And well, that's approach people in a hazmat suit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's really miserable time. Well, I am excited about this project, and I think it's, um, it's great to have it going forward. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I think it's, it's something I think has been kind of long overdue. I think it was one of those things where it just seemed like such a big project that we didn't know where to start, so now we're going to start it. We're going to ask some professionals yeah. to tell us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, the, um, I mean, for, for those people that have been following it, uh, they probably know that the uh, Main Street Streetscape plan um, made reference to that part of the village. We're calling it the Astor Gateway, but, you know, someone else might call it 
the Buckout Aster train station transportation center and intermodal you could but that's the area that um hasn't been dealt with um from the original plan of the, the streetscape so i think we're even going to try to think of a better name for it so people know what what it is so um, master mixed use to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, I it's, for it. it has to do not what just with uh commuters it has to do with you uh, don't want to have a transportation yeah. hub to yeah. air downtown <laughs> <laughs> i oppose yeah it's you know it's it's pedestrians and <laughs> use um, during uh, exactly that's never been used for I'm, I'm saying sorry. sarcastic. I'm just sorry. Oh, I, 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 I missed the banter. But it's, no. uh, so it's, it's going also for being home. what happens uh, to the kids going to the library in the middle of the day when commuters have little interest in that area. So it's it's not narrowly connected just to com commuters. It's the, the aesthetics of that area, the, the one-way, two-way, turning, not turning, all those questions. One affects the other. So it's the beginning of that process. I think a lot of people will benefit from it being um, more, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, a Having better flow. A better flow, if that's the right word, flow, good. So the civic engagement plan is really the scoping document, it sounds like. It will be the plan on how to, how to, do how to get to the scoping document. Right. Yeah, the plan process. for how to, yeah. The process. In other words, where, how, how are we going to figure out what the scope is? Well, we want to reach this group of people in this manner, you know, using these methods. So that that's what this plan is all about. It's very it's a very limited window. Um, and then, you know, the data that's gathered from that research will then uh, better inform what the scope should be. So it's really a one step back a little bit. That's why the amount is not is not so uh, earth shattering here. Certainly, the next the next phase of planning and which maybe eventually leads to engineering would, would be much more substantial. It's like the first half of the first phase. Right. It's one way to look at it. That discussion and a very small resolution. <laughs> Solves approved contract 2020-05 with Kim Kimberly Horn. For planning and traffic consulting services and authorized the village administrator to execute said contract. I'll make the motion for a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, tentative budget review. Okay. Um, well, I'll just start off by saying that um, we're in a really very good position to start this uh, budget off with. And I think the best way to look at it is from actually the last page forward, instead of starting in the front. There we go. Uh, it asked me to do a fund balance uh, projection. Um, well, I think this past couple of weeks have uh, maybe changed things up in the area of sales tax mm. with the uh, decrease of the oil prices and um, economic activity for the next quarter that we're in. Um, so it would be all of, you know, I have my January numbers, they're not bad, but then we have February, March, April, and May. So um, the other thing is I don't think we'll have see much additional revenue from the Recreation Department or from the theater um, as well. But fortunately on those sides of the equation, they have expenses that will also be lower. Mm. So let's say well, Recreation may not have then the expenses for those programs like the uh, baseball and other things like that. So those two should equal out. But uh, let's say a, a week or two ago, I would have said uh, to forecast about 250,000 over the revenues budgeted, but now I would really be more conservative and say 150,000 um, over the budgeted amounts. And that's after we also spent 175,000, we offset the budget with 175,000 of fund balance and also uh, during the year appropriate 100000 for capital projects. So other areas, uh, there have been ups and downs. A court was less revenue. Uh, some other areas were less revenue, but we did really well in um, interest income, um, which I was able to get some CDs at 2%. You don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was there. Uh, so those will be you know, yielding um, the 2% until December of next year, which is a nice thing. Yeah. 
Um, Shabby. Yeah. Not lucky. <laughs> Jumped on a good raid. Anyway, um, so in other areas, we do have um, you know a lot of revenues that are surpassing. Building department up until now has done also you know well for the year. So I think it's comfortable to look at it and think we'll have about 150 thousand on the revenue side that will add to our fund balance. Uh, the other side of the equation is what will happen with expenditures. Um, I went through there, through them all. The only uh, problematic area really is overtime in the police department. Um, I don't know what the next couple of payrolls will be, but it could be about as much as 250000 mm -hmm. in the red. Uh, it, um, because of sickness or because of extended deployment? Um, no, because... Uh, Staffing shortages due to sickness and also due to the two retirements during which time new we recruits. pursued rec new recruits for those individuals, which okay. was not on a context, consciously done. So it was not done for public safety, and it's not an issue of increased patrols or yeah. thinking of some sort of increased public safety requirement? No, I, no, 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 it's really staff, it's a staffing issue. All right. Maybe not as deep, but that's what it looks like it, you know, now. It could, you know. Anyway, so, um, however, we have some real other, you know, positives in our expenditures. Um, we all have a surplus in health insurance of about $270,000. Uh, that was really because we did not get an increase on January 1st of this year. So that will affect five months of the current budget that we're in. So that was a, uh, an unexpected. It's a rarity. It's a rarity, absolutely. Uh, retirement will have um, the surplus of $100,000. Certiorities, uh, taking into account what I have already, it'll give us about another 40000 in that budget line. Uh, looking at some other um, areas, like when you take into account recreation, we'll probably not spend as much as they have budgeted because of the programs. I could see us bringing um, the expenses under the budget by about six hundred thousand dollars in total. So, uh, we'll so the see. fund balance is going to grow. Nicely. So the fund balance is in a good position right now, even with everything going on. Some of those figures are already locked in, like retirement, medical. Yeah, because I mean, I think you know, to me now, with um, the kind of the world changing so quickly in in a how to say it, in less than a month, probably probably about two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it almost feels, it reminds me of back in the days of, of the crisis when, you know, 2008, 2009, where you worried about people being able to pay their mortgages and pay their taxes and all those types of things. All of a sudden, uh, you know, we're, we're already at 0.87, which is pretty low. But, you know, I think to me, you know, the flat year over year uh, tax rate is what we're kind of looking for to not put it, not another burden on, on people. And we're also lucky that our, our water budget's doing well, so we're not going to have increased water rates either. Um, you know, so I think that, uh, or, not, or not dramatically. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that, I think that's kind of the message we need to send right now when you have, you know, it, I mean, I've heard on some of these conference calls, I've been on people worrying about, you know, people being able to pay their, their, their town, yeah, uh, the, the, the property taxes in general. Um, you know, there's just coming due next month. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's become dire very quickly and it doesn't seem like, we definitely have to turn the corner and say things are looking better now. I think we're still in the early days of the kind of down cycle. So I think having a, a tight budget this year is, is prudent and necessary. So. I do think, though, um, I do think that we're going to need to look in April um, at a couple of revenue items. Uh, we made certain assumptions about the mortgage tax, mm -hmm. which actually were, were on the, we, we were pessimistic about it. But I think, it, I think the opposite would be true. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we were pessimistic thinking that there would be less, fine, less uh, economic activity. But when the rates, rates then drop dramatically, the refinancings are clearly in a, in a boom. Right now, so. Well, that's, actually, that's you can turn to the next page, but that, those right. are revenues. Anything no, no, wait a minute. I'm not suggesting that. Right. 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 Because then on the negative side, it's the sales tax. Right. And it's not just sales tax from the economic activity. It was even just initially the sales tax from the reduction in gas prices. Because the gas sales tax is actually what drives a lot of the county mm -hmm. activity. So 
Um, we saved money on the other side for not spending the gas. Yeah, right. So it remains to be discussed, I think, in April when we have hopefully more information. We'll see. Do we have any, with Justin Sally, we've had anybody yet who's come saying they can't pay their taxes or they can't pay their bills, one of those, whatever. No, it's way too early. No, our bill goes out in June. Okay. So we don't have a collection right now. The water tax, water bills are relatively, you know, relatively low this time of year. So we haven't had, and we've had a good collection rate so far. So that was a good segue into the revenues, which is the next page going forward. Um, you can see a rundown of the revenue changes. Um, we're looking at right now an increase of revenues in, in the amount of three hundred eleven thousand um, dollars. We're talking about the sales tax. The number we've listed here is the one we were given by the state when they first increased the sales tax. So um, that may need to go down. And that may need to go down. That's yeah. part of the problem. They originally gave us a number of three hundred forty-three thousand. Um, and I, and I tried to get more information, was it including just, I think that was just a result of the sales tax. But if general sales are lower, people are not buying cars, whatever else, that number will go down. Not eating in restaurants. Yeah, for anything. Yeah. So that's a pretty serious number to you know, look at. You don't want to get that. You should put on a toilet paper tax if you have made it up. <laughs> <laughs> per sheet. Uh, we've increased the uh, cable. I will, well, I can go through them very fast. Cable franchise fees. Um, it was previously in the cable fund. Now it's represented in the general fund. Slight increase of 10000 there. Rec fees, as um, Joe Archino went over with you, was a projection uh, downward. Is that including everything that's been canceled so far? No, this is for next year. He was feeling next year's revenues would not be as strong. Oh, OK. OK, right. Um, yeah, I think he, he specifically mentioned youth baseball. That was one of the programs. So we, we talked about that. But right. I remember that, yeah. It just, you know, it was, no, this doesn't reflect current, current, activity. current activity. which... Yeah, it's where we are. Yeah, I mean... Like, uh, it could be no camp. I, I, who knows? I mean... Right. And, and our, our current policy that's being communicated is that um, the intention is to make up the classes or the programs that happen to be missed right now, but obviously the longer this goes on, the less of an opportunity they'll be. Yeah, it doesn't make sense at some point. will be refunds, so, but that's it's going to be the cost of doing business at this point. But also the, listen, in terms of expenses, are all of the part-time help already hired for these classes, or do they, how, how much no, in advance are they? No, I think there's, there's, a good number of them are, if, if they don't work, they don't get paid in terms of the instruction. So yeah, that's good and bad, but it's good for the budget and bad for the folks expecting it. But. Right. Okay. I uh, just want to let you know that camp, any revenues that have been received, uh, those are really put aside for next year's revenues. So even if we give refunds for Teamscape and everything, it will not affect the budget that we're currently in. Um, you can see the fire protection has increased. That reflects a new contract you just passed. Uh, snow removal also reflects a new state contract. There's an increase there. We look at cell tower revenue. Uh, we felt comfortable. I feel rental wrong. It's regal. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> something like that. Uh, cell tower rentals up 15,000. Um, you know, Larry and I analyzed them. It's interesting because some of them have been merge with other cell tower companies. So eventually they may decide that it's redundancy, but until then we'll see you know, a modest increase. Yeah, the networks aren't merged yet for sure. So. For sure. But may, they may be trying to hold positions for their antenna. Yeah, so well, there's no way for us to really anticipate that unless you're really connected into the industry, but I think the, the types of money that we're talking about here are not super significant. If, you, if we find out later that a Sprint network finally merged with a T-Mobile network and we lose $20,000 of revenue, that's, that's That's fine. There's a small, there's a relatively small. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, the old variety of lease is a big, it's it's a big, big lease. It's a big one, AT&T lease. Okay, uh, we've increased the budget on both sides for 
the building, the purchase of 86 Main Street. Uh, we projected 40,000 in revenue and then projected 40,000 in expenditures, just to keep it a budget neutral, not knowing what to anticipate. Revenues being current uh, residents. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. Uh, building permits, a modest increase of 10,000. Uh, street opening permits, a modest increase uh, because of the change in the fee schedule. Uh, fines and forfeitures, we've offset that by uh, 40,000. We just see um, the volume of tickets have not been you know, generated. We re reduced the prosecutor's line to offset that in the court uh, fund. Um, and then lastly, uh, this, the mortgage tax, well, who knows now yeah. with the interest rates at zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the, well, we'll I don't know. Reason, we'll see. See. Re refis yeah. will certainly be strong, but, but house sales, but new <laughs> and sales of homes and new mortgages that are might, probably not. So we'll keep it flatter. You might, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> keep the way it is. Yeah. Oh, we'll bring that angle. All right. Yeah, expenditures. What I did here is uh, I recapped all the expenditures. So it's um, you didn't really review court, but I added the court one here. And the only real change was a decrease in the salary lines. I believe they're re replacing the um, assistant court attendant um, with a part time or part time person. Uh, prosecutors slightly less because we think there'll be less activity. Uh, general government support that includes uh, anti-fishing uh, program, disaster recovery for um, IT. And Can I just tell you, I think things. fishing is misspelled. It's with a P. It's a PH. PH. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an IT nerd like Mark. Yeah. You're <laughs> testing us. Yeah. We clicked on it. Yeah. 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 Fishing for yeah. 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 It could be anti-fishing, too. It could be, I yeah, know, exactly. Maybe something new, I don't know. Anyway, insurance, um, and we've been very fortunate that insurance um, has been relatively uh, level. It's a slight increase over last year's premium, uh, about a 3% increase over last year's premium. There's a very small increase there. Then we have our DPW requests that um, in the books you have and we have more specific information on the requests yeah, could you remind me? I don't remember why um, that's seemingly the really high large high. ones yeah. were that we were inc we were accelerating our plan for uh, paving. It was to instead of borrowing to incorporate that into our operating fund, and we were planning to put well, in thirty thousand. But then we put we were planning to do thirty, but put in the sixty because we thought it was perhaps a good year. To but there's still another hundred and ten thousand, so that's just a small component. So 60,000 of the 169 was for um, sure, was for paving. I yeah, I can look at the more detail. Yeah, you know, if you want. I'm just to be interested. What other large item there is in there? Or is there? I can get it. You know. Okay. Just for a second. Request for additional part-time help for um, just under thirty thousand. And let me pass it over to you. If you like your books, I could distribute them because I do have them here. Now I'm just looking at what's salary related over time. Just nothing really. It's nothing to do with the CSCA, no, except in uh, contingency. Okay, this, do you want to sentence, sir? Are you okay? I'm okay. It was yeah, I don't see any other major yeah, we beyond have. salary yeah. level type stuff. That... Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Police request was um, $100,000. Recreation and Park, $97,000. Uh, theater was $20,000. Library, 36. 
Uh, we decreased planning board. Um, it's really just a function of reevaluating the billing, the escrow billing. Um, how that works is when people are in front of the board, they uh, post an escrow and it is billed out and then we rebill it at a slight markup. To, uh, anyway, so in analyzing prior year, the revenues received, uh, we felt that we could decrease the expense side and the revenue side was, was good. So this is pretty much in proportion to the expense for those billings and the revenue received on the other side. Uh, we have the 86 Main Street, uh, 40,000. Um, retirement, I'm projecting an increase of about 67,000. We've been fortunate that up until now, the uh, retirement rates have been very level or slightly decreased. It's more of a function of increased salaries. Um, we'll see how the market does and the effect of that long term, but for next year, those rates are set. So we see our way clear on it. Social Security, a slight increase, reflects just um, increases in general salaries. Um, workers' comp, very fortunate there. Um, I was presented last week with um, an opportunity to lock in for two years, a two year at the same rate. Um, and it looked like a good opportunity because it would uh, decrease this year's workers' comp and then lock it in for next year. Nice. Nice so I figured, you know, in the environment we're in of uncertainty, I didn't see any downside. Um, no, and that was before fishing. everything really fell apart. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so um, I think it was a good. I think it was a good opportunity that the village can take enough, um, advantage of. Um, health insurance, uh, an increase of 166,000, and it really represents the increase we would experience next year, next January. And I put in what historical amounts have been about eight percent. Uh, oh, so it doesn't kick in until next January. Right? Well, the increase, right. Yeah. So it's projecting the increase, and also we have a number of retirements, uh, potential retirements, so it's budgeting for replacements of those people. Uh, when people first retire, they are on our policy as retirees, so it's an additional policy for the new hires. So there's ad I put in enough to, uh, so it wouldn't be a surprise to the budget. Um, and debt service is actually seeing a, a decrease uh, due to the structuring of the debt service. So the net increase, when you offset the revenues with the expenditures, the levy is up $211,000. <laughs> so then you can flip to the preceding page. Um, this is our tax cap worksheet. And this may want to go pretty much uh, near the bottom. Um, when you put in how much the levy would need to be, we'll be under the tax cap um, by 467000 So the whole amount we had available to us was 678000 We're using um, 211000 that's the levy, leaving us the four sixty seven. And then he had asked me how much of that could be rolled over um, to subsequent budgets. And the formula is 1.5% of the tax levy limit. And it is 225000 So you would be leaving something on the table, so to speak. Sorry. And then lastly would be your uh, the first page. And this is giving you the total expenditures, revenues. I'm assuming here that we still have um, $175,000 of surplus being appropriated, which uh, clearly is doable for next year. Um, and it gives a slight increase then of um, just over six cents per thousand of assessed value. And the percent increase is under 1%, 0.87. Good work. <coughs> I think we're in good shape. So, remind me of the timing. Uh, we have to have a public hearing on it or adopt uh, it by the 20th. Well, the public hearing has to, 
has to be held between April 1st and April 20th. I think the 20th. 20th. 20th is my mind. Yeah. And, um, and so we're, we have it scheduled for April 6th. We'll see how that goes. Um, you know, you have until May 1st to adopt it, but. Um, yeah, that's maybe, right. Larry, maybe there's a change in Larry and I were talking about the state how, law because you know, of the. Um, the uh, you know, the, budget, like, the only thing that's really pressing right now is the budget. Um, but, you know, it's probably do. I mean, we've done a lot of the work. Thankfully, we've had, the, we've had hearings. Um, or if we've had presentations. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, I think it's doable. You know, we're going to work on the technology. It seems like uh, Larry's coming up with a good plan for that. So, sorry, we were talking about the budget. What are we saying? The technology for the meetings here? Correct. Yeah, yeah so we're just saying, like, you know, if, if for the next month, if we wanted to cancel all of our meetings, the biggest thing that would be hindering that is the budget, because that's the thing that's really pressing. Most of our other items aren't necessarily super time sensitive, but the budget is. Uh, and, and to be perfectly honest, the, although the statutory deadline for a budget is May 1st, the practical deadline is really May 20th or in that range because you need a, you need a tax warrant. warrant. You need a warrant to start collecting taxes. So if you don't have a warrant to collect taxes, I don't have and the legal authority. Then your tax collect collections yeah. get delayed, and that's the where the issue comes in. Whether we meet a statutory deadline is, is really of little consequence to the functioning of the village. Put me in jail. No. <laughs> and when you think about it, uh, anybody else anyway. I mean, that was that was, that was the norm up until ten years ago with the state budget. So you sure. know, never adopted. That's very true. Yeah. So I forgot about that. Well, well, I don't think it's going to come to that. I think that you, that the practical deadlines are actually further out than the, than the statutory ones. Well, what do we have to do? We have to do a final review or just a public hearing? Just a public hearing. Because this is the final review. Right? Yeah, as far as this is the as far as this is the tentative budget, and there won't be any changes to this budget until yeah. until the hearing is held, mm -hmm. and then at that point you can make changes to that to this budget. Um, Do we have to vote to accept the tentative budget tonight or not? No. No, it just happens. So do we expect people to, I just don't even remember this, it's not that often we get people come in to talk about the budget. Right. Is it? I mean, no, no, I don't think it depends on the year. I mean, it yeah, depends exactly. on what you're doing. But yeah, we, when we've cut things, people have come in and expressed displeasure. Sure. 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 But every single department presentation has been in a public meeting. Yes. So people and all these discussions has been involved in the entire process up until yes. this phase. Yes. Yeah. I, look, it, if you, depending on how things go in the coming weeks, um, I don't think it would be that difficult to take your electronic version, to circulate and publicize it as needed, uh, make copies available anywhere, you know, whatever public building might may or may not be open at that point. Not sure. okay. <laughs> but, you know, but we can publicize it, we can get help from the from the press to publicize it for us as well. And then if the hearing happens to be held using conference, people can join that meeting and raise their hand in the conference. That's one of the features of the, of the video conference. And you could get feedback through electronic means, or you can very clearly state in your publicity Please send your comments in ahead of the meeting, whether it's a phone call to the village administrator, the mayor, whatever, or whether it's an email, which most people use, whatever it is. You know, it, the point is, is I think we can manage to get enough publicity out there um, so that people have an opportunity to look at it and decide if they have a comment. And by the time you show up in April, if you've heard not anything from anyone, you don't have much of a public hearing to worry about. I mean, you know, it's not working. So I just have to say that I know I was just on a Zoom conference earlier, uh, in mid last week, where they had like almost 600 people on it. And, you know, it's quite robust and it's easy to load on your laptop. Or uh, Zoom. Or <coughs> I don't know. I had never tried it on. Yeah, you can. And it's, I'm sorry. I was going to say, it's like, we also do, Larry, where, you know, like, you and I show up here, you know, and obviously we wouldn't want the public to come necessarily, but 
if we want to make one place available, we can almost set it up like this. And, you know, like, you can. I mean, we, we can, I mean, we can, we can figure out, we can put it on there, we can figure out the details, but, you know, to me, it's that way. If, if someone doesn't have access to a computer and they can't go to the library, obviously, and they want to sit in the back of this room and have their voice heard, then two of us are here and we're pretty socially distant now, so. <laughs> right. Well, we're not the only ones in this spot, right? It's every single yeah. municipality. Right. So I think I would suspect as, um, the weeks unfold, we'll, there will be some consensus about what's the appropriate way to handle this in this climate. Right. I mean, I've seen, as of right now, I've seen more cancellations than anything. Um, but cancellations of, 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 of meetings? No, of, of meetings right now. But, you know, as you move into April, the meetings, in the case of the budget, become a little bit more important. And, and by then, people have their technology together and test it and Ready to ready to do it electronically is my guess, but we'll see. But it can work. I don't. I don't. Um, I'm not. I'm not worried about um, you know somehow taking an action and the community saying we didn't know anything about it. I mean, I think we <laughs> have you know, ways of uh, getting. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> I think we, we can do it, you know, we can, we can take it and make an effort to get the word out. I, I thought of a, an announcement that just when you're talking about technology, and that's the census. I, I got mine in the mail. I bet others did as well. And the expectation is you do it on, on your computer, um, and then there was always the expectation that people would go to a library. Um, now, obviously, the library isn't available. I know institutions bigger than us here in this room, you know, will have alternative ways for people to think about how to do this. But um, I'm just bringing it up about how important it is to everybody in Westchester, sales tax and other kinds of things, represent representatives in Congress. And uh, many so, things depend on counting everybody. Is did Greenberg shut their library? I don't know for sure. I think Yonkers shut, right? Their I library. think it's. I think that was part of the governor's um, <coughs> talk today. I'm just trying to think of who might have. They, if they said bars and <laughs> restaurants, you think they'd said libraries too? But so I don't know. Tomorrow, once they right. Anyway, I. I mean, there it's there are right. ways to deal with this. I'm well, just saying. Well, restaurants are actually take out. It um, certainly presents a challenge. You know, we have. We had different things planned in the coming weeks. Uh, we had the county lined up to come uh, do a presentation uh, over, probably over some food with the senior citizens. On the uh, census. On the census. Yeah, yeah. right, April, exactly. April 1st or April 2nd, I think, was the date. Yep. Um, you know, that probably won't happen. Uh, we had plans <coughs> to, bring, to invite people into the library with right. people assisting. Right in the responses, not answering for them, but helping them right. answer. That's, that's, too that's not happening either. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I should set up a computer kiosk on the street. I mean, there are there, like, there, 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 there will surely be ways to do this. It's such a bizarre, yeah, it's, it's just, well, anyway, it, we're, uh, fortunately, I, I realize April 1st is technically census day, but the, the there is a good window of time to Try to get people together and do this, or help, help them out. July, I mean, you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, but they'll, they'll have visits. People outside, yeah. and somebody has a computer here, and there's a line with six feet between each person that, that needs help, and you have a, a little just, station right outside on Ferris Street. I thought you were going to open up your basement with your computer. <laughs> that would be one way. <laughs> we, wouldn't even, we wouldn't even be in a position to organize something like that right now. Be yeah. honest with you. I mean, practically speaking, maybe in a couple of weeks, maybe in a month, I don't know. But um, the bottom line is that the people, there's plenty of time for people to respond, even though we were pushing to get people to do it early. One of the reasons we were pushing, or one of the enticements to push people, was to make sure that they didn't have someone come knocking on their door. Not because of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, now, but just. But just in general, you want yeah, to be bothered right, with that. Exactly. Like, answer it, and then you won't be bothered anymore. Exactly, yeah. Um, so those don't happen until I think May and, and beyond, you know, for the people who haven't answered any of them. And then as you like to mention, hey, the census is coming. Give me something to do while you're quarantining. Yeah, I mean, we've done, we've, we, we have an email that's been 
done once when we, well, we were planning on some reminders, but there's been so much other information. Yeah, I had, I had a couple of them pop up, but I just, yeah, I just I saw a, a great ad with an elderly lady, a public service ad, and she's doing a solitaire on her computer like that may be the one thing she does. And then somebody comes over and says, you know, like, you can do the census, and she does it. It's really, really easy. I mean, it's... I saw that. So it's, I thought that was very effective. Like, you don't have to be afraid of screwing it up. You, you, you can't. I mean, it's, it's really easy. But it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward, and some of us count as senior citizens here, and we can do it. Yeah, I, it's it's been on my mind for sure. Yeah. And unfortunately, there just isn't any way to address it right now, not in any co coherent way. Right. So. Well, I'm just trying to, for all those people listening, to encourage them to try to do it themselves if they are yeah. able. <laughs> One thing we might think about doing, if it looks like people do need help, is have a call in time where people can call and someone will answer the questions, how do you fill out these forms? I don't know if that would be helpful. Yes, sir. We do staff. I have yeah, call to your colleague here. A help, sorry. A help <laughs> line. Call in, if we have some sort of call in availability of people who can help over the phone. Yeah. OK, I open the census. I don't know what this question is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we can do that. We and we can get some guidance from the county in terms of, uh, you know. Yeah, that might not even be a village function. Yeah, no, no. Right. I'm just, just wondering answering the questions correctly and all that. So. It has to be help the census helpline already. Say it again. Oh, of course. Census yeah. Help yeah. Help yeah, some people yeah. Are, are encouraged. All right, much more easily call a local, which is fine. We're we're ready to do all that. We yeah, just, I know. I know. We, were, I know we, were, we were right on top of it. But. Okay. Well, does anybody have any uh, trustee liaison reports? No. Actually, I do. Exactly. Oh, you do? Yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to point out to a lot of people, to people that a lot of the pl uh, land use boards, like the planning board and so forth, ARB, will have a very reduced schedule, if at all, in terms of which applications they are going to require uh, applicants to be in person and so I think the best thing to uh, suggest is to actually look online at the posted agendas for the particular meeting to see one what's on the agenda it may be a non-existent agenda at a particular or very limited or two it might get to the point where the boards are actually uh, in uh, uh, whatever <laughs> virtual not even meeting at this some point they yeah. might be in uh, suspension for a while yeah we were, we were waiting for the uh, today was the filing deadline for ARB for example yeah. I think there might be one case on there we have to look at it and see whether we're even having a meeting so we're, we're so everything is online on the village website or will be it's under <laughs> the calendar you can see particular boards and get their agendas for a particular session yeah. and that was so, all I wanted to point out was just I, I don't have anything. Village Administrator's Report? I don't have a report tonight. Clerk Treasurer? <laughs> no questions. <laughs> no, 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 no public comment. Uh, Ash and Adam, remind everybody about census. Uh, yeah, we'll include that here. Yep. And figure yeah, out census. about Zoom yeah. or... Yes. I'm working on that. I'm sure that's... Yeah. That's top of mind. That will make your motion to adjourn if I can have a second. All in favor? Aye. All right.